Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Stardom. I'm Jukebox Ginger, the host. And with me today, I've got Shane Vidko. Shane, I've been trying to get you on here for like, fuck, what's it been, six, seven months yeah, now? Easy. Easy. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm hot as shit uh, and drinking coffee, but I'm good. Yeah, dude, I had a cup. I forgot to grab it, but whatever. I drink coffee like crazy. <laughs> yeah, I had to. I was I was in bed up until about 8.07, and then I had to get up and like present myself because once you know you want to do this podcast at fucking midnight, and I'm an old man, dude. I go to bed at a reasonable hour. Yeah, well, you know, I've got two kids, and I work 25-hour <laughs> weeks, and I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only time for me to dude, do Dude, you know what it is? Because my <laughs> wife is like tired, and she wants to go to bed being pregnant. I'm like, all right, I'll call it a night. And the next thing you know, you do that four or five times in a row. It's 9.30, and I'm like, why are the lights still on? You know, <laughs> you know, usually for me, like I'll pass out before my wife. And then by the time she's going to bed, she kicks me out because I'm snoring. So I have to go down on the couch. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I'm not allowed to fall asleep first because, you know, that's part of the safety blanket is like she falls asleep while I'm still awake. So the bad guys will kill me. You know? Oh, right. <laughs> so She also makes me sleep against the wall, which is even funnier because it's like you think she would want to be on. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. She's like, babe, don't worry. I got this. <laughs> so, hey, man, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. I know you've got like multiple fucking businesses and you do multiple things. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I won't give you. I feel like when every time I do a podcast, too, mind you, I'm sober. So every time it's like I feel like I'm speaking at a meeting and I'm like, well, OK, so it all first started. I first started smoking <laughs> weed. and so the non part of that, um, I don't know, I grew up uh, just outside of Boston and, um, uh, now I, uh, uh, I live in Texas and, you know, I've, I've had a, a crazy journey, dude. Um, you know, I grew up outside of Boston and, uh, I joined the military and got out of the military, got hooked on drugs, went to prison for a long time, got out, Damn. moved to California, got sober, um, and then ultimately left, moved to Texas, bought a house, uh, got married, got a kid on the way. And um, and yeah, I, I have uh, Deviant Gentleman was a podcast that I did for a, for a long while with Tommy Vexed and um, still a brand and a business that I have. And then my wife and I have a, a tea business called Boston and the Brit Tea Company. Right. And um, and then, you know, I, I try to. I feel like I have my hand in in a bunch of things all at once. Right. And it's like right. I'm always thinking of something new or doing something new and you know it's it's a tough racket dude you know and i'm not like uh it's 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 we're doing we're doing well but it's tough it is tough to do and yeah and, um, get all this shit done especially with having a kid on the way you know yeah man and, and congrats for having a kid on the way man that's it's fun stuff especially this, this is your first of course right it is yeah it's uh scary and fun all in the same time yeah and it's you know, it's crazy because I, everyone keeps telling me like, oh man, it's going to be the best thing, but it's also going to be the hottest thing. It's going to be the best thing, but it's going to be the worst thing. And I'm going like, bro, I, is it time to not do this? Because you guys are not making this seem like it, it's almost like you're like, Hey, you know, most people can handle this. Not you, but most people can, you know? Right. But, um, I'm excited, man. I, I am. I, I'm not the type that ever wanted kids. I didn't think that I would be alive long enough. I knew that I couldn't take care of me. So how can I be responsible for uh, a little human being, you know, right. and, um, for me to be in a place where like, I'm excited and as ready as I could be, uh, is, is, is pretty fucking amazing. You know, dude, it, it, it's awesome. It's, it's not something that you can prepare for. It, it happens and you just roll with it. I mean, it, it's, it's a great, great ride. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a manager at Costco. So I work, you know, 55 hour weeks and then, come home i got two podcasts that i do um yeah. and then i try to spend as much time with my wife and kids as possible as well so right um, i i got two and then i got clipped i was like i'm done <laughs> and it's tough man I've, I've tried uh redoing the podcast thing on a, a few different levels tommy and i tried a few times he's a busy man and, yeah man and it's great you know what i mean because mm. post covid uh, like when covid happened it was like we didn't really know what was going to happen with all that or what he was going to do so to see him you know off and flourishing and doing doing what he wants to do is is fucking cool yeah. um but yeah just I, it, it was it was tough it was tough and uh I think it's like also i got spoiled man like i lived in la where i had a studio that i went to every week right paid you know these guys and they were great engineers and all this stuff and they they 
you know, put everything together for me. Like I just had to make some clips for, for social media, but you know, they put everything together for me and it was so easy and in person that when I first started doing podcasting like this and everything, I was like, man, this is so strange and yeah, it's cool. But the in-person vibe is, is completely different. And, um, yeah. You know, and then I've I've tried that here. My wife and I even even did one, and I you know I think we we've we've talked about trying to fire that back up, but it just takes a lot, man. And it's like you know I've been have not been doing it for so long now that like when I was resetting this up today, I'm like, oh my god, where's this screw? Where's this piece? Where's all my shit? Because right. I just haven't been. It's you know everything's been sitting for so long because I've been fucking busy. Yeah, man. Um, and for me, I. I started just doing it solo and bullshitting on my phone. And I was like, man, this is, it's fun, but obviously this is some shitty quality. So, you know, I posted a few clips on, on Facebook groups and, and this dude says, Hey man, I, I like the concept. Do you want to get some guests on? I was like, well, fuck yeah. So I got a mic and, uh, it was a pretty shitty, like $35 mic setup, And, um, I had a tablet that it hooked up to is like an old school, like plug into the fucking tablet. Yeah. And, and I was using this uh, platform, but it was like the free version. So then I would have to stream it on YouTube and then go back and screen record on the tablet, the whole fucking thing over again, and then strip the audio. It was a pain yeah. in the ass. It's a nightmare. Dude. I mean, I was doing at one point where it was like, you know, taking the audio and the video and then trying to dub it so that it wasn't off stepped and not on. on and it was, you know, there was probably definitely an easier way to go about that. Mm. I just didn't know that route. Yeah. So I took the longest, hottest road possible. <laughs> and uh, right. yeah, um, it's, it is quite the experience. I get, I like your, uh, your backdrop. Is that an actual like functional working little bar area? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no, no. This is a green screen, man. <laughs> oh, see, you've had me fooled. So, I'm like, look at this guy. Yeah, just in no. his basement with a fucking full on bar. Like, <laughs> I know, wish. I mean, good fuck, alcohol. Yeah, <laughs> I don't drink like that anyways. So. <laughs> I do like a craft beer every now and then or some, you know, whiskey on the rocks or something, but I'm not like a heavy drinker at all. So, um, but the whole, so I started JG's lounge kind of for all my social media because I have this rant comedy rant podcast that I'm doing right now with you. And then I started a new one called jamming with jukebox where I actually have artists on and we talk about how they got into the music industry. And then we do like walkthroughs of a couple of their songs and talk about their songs. And I was like, I don't really want my social media to be called my host name. So I came up with JG's Lounge because it kind of had more of a mellow vibe to it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, so what, go what ahead. Kind of, what kind of artist do you have in on there? Random or? Um, a, yeah, a they're, they're more like, or? I like a lot of underground stuff. So I've had, um, let's see, Brent Underwood. He's like a Southern rock artist out of uh, uh, North Carolina. He was on last week. Um, I've had... Um, scotty hasting he is a country singer out of memphis and uh i've also had sellouts they are a, a post hardcore rock band out of michigan so i, I don't want to stick to a certain genre because i yeah. like all music man so um if you know anybody that's trying to get big and you know want some exposure <laughs> well i'm thinking about starting a rap career so i'll let you know no shit no i'm just uh kidding <laughs> I mean, I, I was a little surprised when you said rap, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love rap, but it's going to no, be like I, I do like it too. fucking killing people rap, you know, I can. Yeah. No. See, I like British rap. I like yeah, I don't mind of, that either because yeah. I, I can fuck with Central C a little bit, you know? Yep. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. I like uh, there's a guy called Ocean Wisdom and man, he's fucking he's killer. Him and you know, it's you know, it's funny to me is like British rap is rap British uh -huh. British singers sound fucking english but then when yes. they start talking they sound like my wife and they're like oh cool, blow me. Oh, I <laughs> your wife does have a hell of an accent man yeah she does <laughs> i've seen her in some of her clips and with you and her, and her talking and i'm like man and you both it's, you have that boston accent too man it's like it's crazy well, that's what i'm saying i mean you got i have a boston accent she's got the england accent and then we're gonna raise a kid in texas you know so it's like right right uh, how, how far along are you right now Is uh, it the 16 weeks Oh, damn. Yesterday so or Monday? Monday, I think, was 16 weeks. Nice. I fucking ask her. She's in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So because you are a father-to-be, I found some pretty fucking crazy stories of uh, things that you probably shouldn't do in the delivery room. And I figured it'd be funny as hell. And uh, we could share stories that obviously aren't going to be related to that. But, you know, just as funny. 
I love fucking stories. <laughs> All right. This first one says my husband asked if he could borrow one of my pillows because his back hurt and I had too many. <laughs> this this was in the delivery room. Yes, this is it, all of this is going to be either in the delivery room or on the way. <laughs> uh, what did he need the pillow for? Like to hold? Uh, he said his back hurt. <laughs> oh, he was going to go have a to go sit down. I mean, fuck, you Probably know, this lady could have been pushing for twenty hours, and he went back. Oh, I love you, but I got to fucking sit down. You know what I mean? Oh. Like, <laughs> no, nah, my know? wife would have fucking strangled me while she was pushing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like that guy's a, a bit of an asshole. Also, yeah, that's a bit yeah. much. Um, you know, it's funny. My my bed has probably three dozen pillows on it. My wife loves pillows, and somehow so, every night I end up with a one. <laughs> I just got her the uh, the C pillow, like that's fucking the pregnancy one that's shaped right. like a C, and that's the new. That's her thing. I, she might divorce me for this fucking pillow, D- dude. Actually, have you felt them? They're comfortable as fuck. It's amazing. Every time she gets up to go and piss, I pull it a little bit closer. So I don't like cuddle with it. You know what I mean? I think it's pretty badass. It is. So we have like three body pillows and all this other shit. I'm like, there's like no room to do well, anything. Well, see, for, for us, it's like you got to decide, right? Because so we have right. two big dogs. One, the pit bull's not allowed to. He, he can lay up there until a certain point, and then he gets evicted because he's just a big, hot pile of cement and it just doesn't work the the malinois is a little bit skinny and he stays at the at the feet of the bed so it's not right. so bad but you get the big dog in there this big pillow she's got three more pillows behind her i got two two end up over here you know she she does i i will say though she's not crazy with the decorative pillows she does have them but it's yeah. not like you know i'm there for 10 minutes peeling them off every day right um are, are you a decorative pillow house <sighs> No, but we have blackout curtains in literally every room. Our house stays cold no matter what time of the year it is, and it's dark at 3 in the afternoon. It looks like it's midnight. <laughs> uh, she's got some decorative pillows, but we we have so many animals that we're constantly having to change our shit, man. Um, pillowcases, furniture. <laughs> We've got, at one point, we had four dogs, uh, four cats, and seven ferrets. Hold on, dude. Seven <laughs> ferrets just seven run. fucking. Oh, you keep ferrets. them in like one of those. We fucking had them. It was a big ass where they all just run around yes. and sit on each other. Yeah, and yes, <laughs> yeah, we had a Is big it, ass mansion. Here's my thing, though, right? I've seen a ferret oh. a few times in my life. A few people I knew had ferrets, and they mm. never didn't smell like they just were rolled in a whole pile of shit. You so have to know you... how to take care of a fucking. Yeah, I was gonna say they have a strict seven of those? diet. Fuck no, raw egg and raw meat. Not raw egg, just fucking uncooked egg and raw meat like several times a week. Let them out to play. Keep them clean. They don't smell. Jeez Louise. Shit, we spent like $700 on one to get it flown in. And it was like in a fucking, what do you call them? Those uh, Angora fair. It was an Angora fair. So it had real long fur and it was fucking massive. It was like this fucking big. <laughs> Every time I think of ferrets, I just think of the Beastmaster when he had those two little ferrets. Yep. Do all his fucking work <laughs> for him. Yeah, we uh, when we moved here, we didn't really have a good spot to put them, so I ended up finding them a better home. So yeah, it is what it is. Now we've you got to uh, them into the backyard and told them to figure it out. <laughs> they they are actually great hunting animals. You can take them to hunt foxes and rabbits. You can actually really? train. Yeah, you can train them to hunt. Hmm. And they'll they're fucking beasts. You can send them into holes underneath the trees, and you throw nets on them so that uh, over the holes, and then they'll drag out the the animals. Is a ferret in like the mongoose category? Yeah, yeah, weasel family, I think is what it is. Uh, dude, yeah. I'm fucking I should be working in a zoo, dude. <laughs> uh so do you train are you are you a dog trainer or do you you tr- work with your dogs? Yeah, so I mean people ask me that a lot too. Like I don't train dogs in the way like hey pit. it's the same thing with like there's a lot of things that I do that people will be like, "Hey, will you train me in this?" or "Hey, can you help me?" And it's like that's not my thing. I didn't, there's, there's, there's some things that I learned in life that I didn't want to utilize as like, Oh, okay. Now let me just go get paid for it. So in other words, uh, no, I, I train my dogs with my trainer. Right. Um, I had a trainer in LA and then we had to leave and then I moved out here. It was very important to me that I found somebody that was on the same page as me. And, and fortunately I was able to find that. And, uh, the guy I work with out here, his name is Paul Freeney, and uh, he's amazing. 
And it's like, he, he just, he just knows, like, he just knows these dogs. He knows the breed. He knows, uh, he knows what he's doing, which is important to me. So, yeah. um, yeah. So we started, I started training when he was about nine weeks old and he just turned two on the first. So, um, yeah, he's, he's come a long way and, uh, and it's great, man, but no, I don't, I don't, uh, train. I, I just my own dogs. And then, you know, if I have people that I know that are having like, uh, some kind of issues with some things, I know a few things here and there, but yeah. No, and I have such great respect for dog trainers and the people that do that, especially the ones that work with uh, such, you know, scary breeds like that. And, yeah. Uh, it's a lot, man. It, it takes a lot, and it's a lot of time and patience and, and not getting aggravated. And, and uh, Right. But, you know, then when you do it and you, and you, you get to see the, the payoff, and uh, it's it makes it worth it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I got a uh, – my blue healer. Uh, and he didn't take much training. He just kind of caught on. Like he never had to be on a leash. Uh, if you're outside, he's right next to you. Uh, he protects the yard. Like if, if he's outside the fence, he knows, you know, just kind of let people pet him. Uh, but if he's behind the fence and you try to reach into that fence, he'll fucking yeah. attack you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he just kind of naturally figured that out. My two dachshunds are assholes. <laughs> They're we, got, the uh, we got some friends out here that have two of those little hot dogs mm -hmm. worst fucking breath ever those dogs oh my god my wife wanted them i was like all right well we can breed them okay we'll breed them and sell them <laughs> yeah so that's that's the plans with them because i really don't want them they're all right <laughs> yeah i've never been into uh little dogs like that we did know. have a uh fucking uh, what was he a new finland you ever heard of a new finland yeah we got him, uh, when we got him, he was not, I mean, he was big. He was fucking like 80 pounds and he wasn't even a year old yet. By the time we got rid of him, he was like 120 and, uh, he was about a year and a half old and he could literally like sit on his back legs and his head would sit over the fence. Like he was huge. He was huge. And we were living in the city and we're like, man, this just ain't going to work. It's just not fair for him. Like he, there was no room <laughs> and he was yeah, given to us. It's tough with those big dogs. Yeah. Um, you know, like a, uh, great Dane and shit like that. When I was a kid, I had a, my buddy had a great Dane. The thing was huge, but I mean, you gotta have a yard and a big house and all that. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a baby horse that you're putting inside yeah. out, you know? Yeah, it was not, we were in the city. We didn't have a huge yard. I mean, we had a yard, but not for him. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get into this next story. All right, shoot. My husband left me to go to the with my brother-in-law to pick up his check from the strip club. He showed back up at the hospital at four in the morning, drunk with flowers. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not, I'm I'm not gonna be yeah I'm not no. really a bet man, but I'd be willing to bet that he didn't come back without uh, having his penis touched either. So <laughs> I imagine uh, he was uh, divorced shortly after. Yeah, that. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough sell. <clears throat> Yeah, no, I never, I was in the, so I was in the delivery room for 13 hours. It was probably 13, 14 hours. And then her mom showed up and she's like, Hey, go walk around and, you know, get you some coffee or something. Two minutes later, calling me, Hey, get back here right now. <laughs> uh, I was like questioning leaving too. And then, well, uh, when's the, um, when was your last born? Uh, she's five. So, okay. So about five years ago. prior to COVID then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Cause I'm under the impression now know. that I don't think anyone's allowed, but me. Yes. I'm pretty sure that's <clears throat> accurate. I, yeah. I don't know hundred percent, but I mean, I people at work who's had kids and shit. I, I'm pretty sure they mentioned something like nobody's allowed in there. Cause I was talking to my buddy today and he was like, you know, fooling around like, Hey, make sure you guys get like a nice family suite for everyone and everything. And I was like, dude, I don't think it's like that anymore. Like mm -hmm. when I was born in the eighties, I'm pretty sure there was a room you could just drill cigarettes in. <laughs> Right. And, yeah. uh, you know, everyone came and they're hanging out and having a grand old time, pop a bottle of champagne. Now it's like, unless mm -hmm. you created that kid fucking screw. Yeah. Don't even fucking come in. Yeah, that's, um, right. that's a, yeah. Cause my, let's see. Yeah. Cause my, my wife, uh, she goes, she's got medical stuff. And, uh, whenever we go anymore, it's like, nobody's allowed in there. Even now. Have, have you had COVID? Uh, dude, so I got COVID and pneumonia last August. We flew to Boston for a week. And like, as soon as we got there, I started feeling shit. But at the time, it was like, everything's COVID. So just NyQuil and DayQuil will be fine. 
and right. we were not fine. And uh, we flew back to Texas, and I ended up getting COVID and pneumonia, and I got that Regeneron uh, Rege- Regeneron infusion treatment or something like that, where they, you know, they put all this shit through me and it probably saved my life. No shit. <laughs> so we just went on a, uh, we just went on a seven day cruise and we got back. And the day we got back, she, she wasn't feeling well. I was fine. And then s- the next day after that, so last Sunday, she spiked the temp at like a hundred. And I was like, that's where I draw the line. So we went to urgent care. Mm. test her for strap all the shit and she tested positive for covid so we came home i still tested negative like another day went by and then all of a sudden i got sick as shit and then uh i was sick for a few days took another test i was still negative she tested she's negative she feels better i feel better so um so i don't even know that i got it again this time maybe i just got sick from traveling or whatever but she's definitely got it twice now but um i've had it three times yeah, it's wild. The, man. the first wild. one, the first one was the worst. I mean, it basically felt like a, a massive head cold for me, and uh, I, I I ended up having like a two week migraine. Like even after like the sickness was gone, I couldn't get rid of a migraine for like two weeks. Yeah, and uh, that's kind of where she's at now. She just got this like steady migraine. But um, yeah, my first go, dude, was 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 pretty tough. I was uh. That was rough. It was that it kicked. I got the Delta or whatever the fuck, but it kicked the shit out of me. But yeah. um, my brother, yeah. my brother in laws had all the vaccines and, and uh, boosters and, and he's he got sick as shit for about mm-hmm. eight days. And that's the thing where it's just like, I mean, vaccinated or not, I feel like people are still getting it. Some people get mm-hmm. it shitty. Some people don't. I mean, I, I don't, you know, claim mm-hmm. to understand all this stuff, but uh, it's fucking wild. For sure. I mean, we're watching a show. Uh, I don't know if you've, uh, it's called the bear on Hulu about like, a, I watched kid, about the kids ten, lift from shameless. Yeah. It's pretty good. I love shameless, I, but I haven't, I don't really think watched. it's got another season in it. I, it's probably a one season thing, but, but it's cool, but it's crazy to me now how in TVs and show TV shows and shit that they just casually talk about COVID now, you know yep. what I mean? Like it, it's, it's, it's so bizarre. It's so bizarre that it's, uh, we've been alive for this kind of thing. Not just that though. Like, if you think about some of the movies you watch as a kid, like I'll be watching them with some of my family or something, and I'm like, man, you don't see any cell phones because they weren't around. Nowadays, it's it's like in everything. But I mean, you know what to do? Go what? back, right? I went the other day, and me and my wife, we watched uh, the Breakfast Club, dude. No, yeah. <laughs> It starts off with Bender's fucking locker, and it says, "Touch my shit and die, fag." <laughs> on his locker and i'm like uh, oh my god remember when you could do that that's crazy not now you couldn't do shit like there's that there's so much talk in that movie that's like oh my god you do that today you'll be buried in the in uh the adx federal max for the rest of your life they'll uh. never see you again <laughs> it's crazy <man. laughs> it's crazy you can't you can't say anything anymore like you can't without hurting somebody's feelings yeah which is why you know on here i, I don't give a fuck i say what i want um, yeah. I tell people, Hey, if you get offended easy, you just don't listen. <laughs> it's pretty simple. <laughs> I feel like there's a few things, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> I'm willing to change for, for some things and adapt to life. And, you know, I get yeah. it, not be a caveman and just like, if you don't think like this, right. But like, <laughs> I don't know, there's still some things that are just like, it's me. It's that's where I, how I grew up, where I'm from. And that's just how it's always going to be. And right. You know, I'm sorry. Yeah. I guess no, you're right though. I mean, it's how it is. I like, I grew up going to church four days a week and then going home and get beat by my stepdad. You know, there's some shit you just fucking, you know, that's how you were. <laughs> that's how I am. That's why I'm the way I am today. Shit. I learned how to not be a parent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I exactly. Uh, what do you, uh, what do you do as far as religion and religious beliefs with the kids then? Um, we don't because my wife's not religious. Um, I grew up real strict Pentecostal, uh, jumped around a lot, and I just, I mean, I was going to church four days a week. Uh, I couldn't wear jeans, couldn't watch TV, couldn't listen to the radio. Shit that I did in school, got I get ran by the church. It was uh, it was more culty, though, man. I mean, and then, you know, you come home to a coke, coked out stepdad beating me. So <laughs> it was okay. a very contradicting life. Yeah. I, church, I, I mean, I, I just ask because I'm very similar. Like, you know, I had a it was weird. I mean, I grew up in, you know, around the Boston area and everyone's either Irish Catholic, Roman Catholic. And it's just like, you know, everything you do is a sin and you're all going to hell. And it's just like, wait, what? 
Yeah. Um, but I have a funny story about Pentecostal. So the only thing I really know about that, when I was in boot camp, anytime, didn't matter if it was Muslim service, whatever it was, they called church, you fucking went, right? Same thing in prison too, for, at, in some places. But um, Pentecostal, I would always go to because it was the only one that would stand up and be dancing and shit. And we could no all shit. sneak out and go meet with our other friends and not Damn. have to even go to the service. Yeah, so yeah I that apologize makes sense. for that, but. No. They're the only ones that were up and dancing, or <laughs> everyone else is sitting there, and there's no way you could sneak out. So we used to right. love the Pentecostal service because we knew we could sneak oh, out dude. and go see our it, buddy. It was crazy because, like, you'd be, you know, you're this young kid with all these fucking adults and teenagers, like, speaking in tongues and, like, running around with their hands up. And they're rolling their eyes around and shit. It's like, man, what kind of witchcraft is this? <laughs> Wait, where was this? What state? Uh, this is here in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm not, yeah, I'm not far from you, man. I've been up in Kansas City my whole okay. life. So. Yeah, so, yeah, you're dealing with I just went out to get the mail, and it's like it's – literally when you walk outside in Texas, you just if you could imagine walking into somebody's mouth, that's what it is. <laughs> that's exactly. Every I time I work come today, out, I'm, like, oh, I'm in someone's mouth. Cool. I, I got off work today, and I walked outside and immediately sweating. Uh, immediately brutal. sweating. It's, I think the uh, heat index right now is like 105 or something like that. It's pretty hot. Yeah, the humidity is, uh, is no joke. That's for sure. We went to uh, Florida uh, about a month ago, about three weeks ago, and um, it was hot too, but it's not the same. It's not the same as the Midwest, man. Well, yeah, I mean, we went on vacation. It was hot, but it's still uh, – I don't know if – I mean, I've lived in Arizona. I lived in L.A., uh, but this is this is pretty – pretty shitty at times it's a humidity i feel like man it's, it's got to right. be the humidity that just drains everybody it is and then you put the 100 degree whatever on top of that too and it's like i mean these guys that work outside i don't know how they don't die i'm a fucking i'm a ginger man i burn real easy and i peel <laughs> off and i'm whiter than i was <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like uh, burn and then just new white flesh uh, yes like my wife literally like golden... my wife peeled some of it off and she's like you are like freshly white <laughs> like a fucking lizard that just shed his skin yes and she's over there like naturally tanning i'm just like you fucking <laughs> uh let me ask you this what uh either of your parents uh day walkers uh no i'm the only one in the family it was my great grandma that was a redhead uh, so because that's another we're worried about having one of you that's why i was like fuck <laughs> What I'm sorry. Chances? I'm sorry if you do. <laughs> yeah. What are the chances that you just randomly get an all red kid? You know what I mean? Oh, dude. Yeah. I mean, like I said, my great grandma was, so it was bound to happen as one of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just very unlucky, I guess. Yeah. Nah, you're all right. <laughs> all right. So uh, I got another story for us. My husband <laughs> is a farmer. So as I was giving birth to our son, he said, wow, this isn't so bad. It's just like giving birth to a cow. <laughs> That sounds like that happened in Texas. Or yeah, like yeah like definitely in Texas. Whatever. You know, I'd say it was in this general region. It probably was. <laughs> uh, man, I was hoping some of these were going to... These are all like... These guys are just shitty individuals. You know, I was well, hoping it was going to be like, you know, this guy just started fucking smoking a cigarette and said, go fuck yourself smoke <laughs> wherever I want. You know, I want to hear those stories. Someone just said, step aside. I got it from here. Yeah, no shit. No, there's not like that, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I didn't. I didn't find any of those. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, do you know any stories like that? Because I mean, I, I'll listen. <laughs> no, um, shit. I don't even really know. Like uh, on the way there, and had to, you know, those stories. Yeah. And if it wasn't for this fucking guy that happened to be, you know, jogging by, that was a doctor, and he stopped and, you know, spread my asshole open and popped the kid out, and uh, yeah, I think my, dude, that's my, another thing. I'm, I'm worried my, about the the drive. The drive there, yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's, you know, a good 25, 25 minutes away. So I'm thinking, like, you know, do I get a cool police escort and I can fucking speed and bro blow red lights and shit, you know? I mean, if but you know the reality is I'll be sitting in the red you. light <laughs> while she tells me, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> you, what you do is you say, are you hungry? And you take her through the drive through and grab something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to get that out. <laughs> um my i think craziest was you they kind of sometimes the babies will come out with these cone shaped heads just because they're the coming through <laughs> and uh it's creepy at first it's like man is that an alien or is that a kid i'm not sure what's going on here <laughs> oh so like they just kind of uh 
become malleable as they come through yes. the fucking opening yes. and then it yes. just creates a fucking my uh, my daughter had I like this cone shaped like heads that. and i was like i remember asking the doctor does that take a while to go <laughs> hey, so you just get no, a rub no, of mallet not. and just yeah. fucking hit him on the head a little bit gently <laughs> and it'll fucking you got some sort of hand split. crank to just kind of get it back <laughs> to where it needs to be <laughs> But no, uh-huh. it's uh it's not that bad, man. I mean, if, if you can handle uh if you're not squeamish, it's it's a it's a wonderful experience, man. Did you um uh did you stay up at the top and then when it's coming out decide to go down there or were you down there fucking you know like this? Well, I was the whole time? while she was pushing, I was on the side and hold I mean she was I mean she, death grip on my hand and uh she wanted me to get video and they tell you not to they're like oh you can't take pictures and i was like fuck you and i'm over there like leaning over the the sheet like taking right. pictures of my daughter you're coming like, Can you move to your left <laughs> yeah like, i don't give a shit you, you, you're not gonna tell me i can't take pictures of my kid yeah. coming out i mean this is my wife wants it anyway so <laughs> yeah i don't know if she wants that kind of thing i know she filmed her sisters and she hasn't been right ever since so <laughs> I well, it's uh, different uh, when it's not you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, I don't, I, dude. The whole thing, like, look, you know what this makes me think of? Like, okay, so I'm, and my wife is, it has, I think, started to learn this about me, but I don't have that. Uh, like, if I told her right now, tomorrow we're gonna go, you know, whatever. I plan some adventure. She would be so goddamn excited and like jumping up and down like a little kid. If she brought me to the garage and was like, "Here's a brand new." fucking 2023 Yamaha R6, right? I would be like, right. oh my God, that's awesome. But like, mm-hmm. I don't fucking, I like, I get weird, especially with gifts and shit. Like Christmas is fucking, I love it. It's great, but it's also weird. And like, I feel uncomfortable. Just can we move on? You know right. what I mean? I'm, I'm yeah. like that. Um, and I feel the same thing of like being there where it's like, you know, babe, I love you, but also like, some shit is happening and I don't know how to react kind of. <laughs> yes. So just don't talk to me or ask me any questions. Just squeeze my fucking hand. And let yes. Me down with <laughs> You're just like, so, over here like this. Giving her your hand yeah. Yeah. Like... <laughs> I'm just like, uh, cause I'm worried about like that. My level of excitement or that if I go like, Holy fuck or something Do like you, that. Uh, well, goes, what? Let's, What's wrong? Well, here's a, here's another thing. Do you get angry easy? Uh, I mean, cause uh, here's easy. yeah, here, like nurses. If there's an issue, this happened with my wife. They don't tell you. They come in. You're like, hey, what's going on? What's going on? They're, they're just fucking doing what they got to do. And then after they figure out the issue, they'll go, oh, well, this was happening. But they don't yeah. want to freak you out. But in return, you're getting more pissed off because they're not telling you what the fuck's going on. Well, I mean, my thing with that is, is you know, I, I think it's the same thing with, like, being a homeowner and having someone come do work at my house. If I hired someone to come here and do work at my house... And, you know, I'm watching them in the beginning, you know, not hovering, but, you know, you see what's going on. Eventually, you just walk the fuck away and, like, let them do their job. You know, I, I guess yeah. it's a little bit different because I don't want you to fucking kill my wife or a child. But yes. I think in those situations, like, you know, I, 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 this is one of those things where it's like I, you know, uh, oh, I do have a good story for you, actually, with this pregnancy. But um, why we chose who we went with for a doctor. So. I don't remember if I told you this when we talked, but so our very first appointment ever, like exactly at eight weeks, I mean, she couldn't have been happier. And now's the time where we're finally going to like find out and all this stuff. So we go to this place and the appointment was for two o'clock. Long story short, we get there early. This lady comes to the door and she's like, we don't open until this time. So fuck off until then, more or less. And I'm like, okay, this lady's a piece of shit, but whatever. (laughs) So we go inside and it's only my wife, me, and one other lady. We're at a fucking OBGYN. Chances are I'm not there for me, you know? So right. you got two women there. And again, my wife's standing at the counter and this other lady turns around like she's fucking just came, just fell down to earth like the Terminator. And she turns around. She's like, can I help you? And my wife's like, yeah, I don't really know what's going on. Like, this is very confusing, uh, you know? And anyway, she was getting flustered. You know, she doesn't do confrontation or anything like that. I do. So right. I stood up and I was like, hey, like, what's the deal? You know what I mean? Like, you guys, like, we, we're new new to this. We don't know what's going on. And, like, this isn't – I work in, like, the, the healthcare industry. And you don't get to, because you're having a shitty day, do that to people in that environment. It's not how it works. Right. And if you can't do that, then get another fucking job. So – 
anyways, I was just like, you know, I don't, I think you guys have shitty attitudes, you know, and it's, it's not nice as a new mother, whatever. And this other lady that had come up first comes up with her fucking diaper on. She's like, what's the problem? I said, the problem is you guys have shitty attitudes. She goes, cancel the appointment. They can reschedule. I'm like, she, I, the look on her face. I'm like, what oh my God. The- I go, you know what? It's my fault, ma'am. I apologize. I'm going to leave. Please just see her. No, it's canceled. I said, I want to speak to the doctor. She said, sir, I need you to leave or I'm calling the police. I said, for what? I haven't, I haven't done anything wrong. I want to speak to the doctor. She said, sir, I'm not going to tell you again. Leave or I'm calling the police. What can, I, don't, I don't have that option to be like, well, then call. Yeah. I'm a felon. Yeah. I go to prison and then they figure it out. Fine. Right. I leave. 30 minutes goes by. Her phone starts ringing. And I'm thinking it's going to be the doctor to be like, hey, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. No, it's the police department being like, hey, we're looking for your husband. We need to speak to him. I'm like, imagine, dude, I haven't had the cops called on me or anything like that in fucking years. Right. I don't live like that. Right. So that fucked me up and made me like, I'm not a goddamn criminal. I didn't threaten this lady or anything. So I call the cop and, you know, he's like, you want to tell me what happened? I'm like, dude, imagine you're a fucking grown up and I'm a grown up and you're taking time to fucking call me right now. Like I got caught smoking in the fucking bathroom. So I said, this is what happened. They just a shitty people. I let them know that. And he's like, well, the staff is asked that you not uh, go back or you'll be arrested. And I'm like, well, that's crazy and not real, but fine. I have yep. no reason to go there anyways. You know, again, I choose what I want to be. And the guy wasn't a dickhead. The cop, he understood. But it's like, here's what happened. In my opinion, is this lady sees me. I'm in ta- covered in tattoos and shit. Yeah. Makes an assessment. When they call and give my name to the police, now they run my name, they see my record. Now they have to make that call because now if I show up as a violent person and they didn't do anything about it, then they're fucked. So like, I understand, but that was our first experience. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And the next guy we called, it was completely different. They were so nice. We went there. And here's the thing of how things work. Like I thought for a long time, I was like, man, I was out of line. I should have just shut the fuck up, but I shouldn't have. I stuck up for my wife. We spoke up for ourselves. We end up with this guy. We go into his office, and and this is how crazy shit is. He's got a fucking Bobby Orr jersey signed and framed on his wall, and then a 2008 Red Sox World Series hat all signed by the team. (laughs) Never been there or nothing. Just got obsessed with, like, Boston sports, and I'm like, how crazy is that? You know what I mean? That's awesome, man. But that was was, was interesting uh, on so many levels because that was our first experience, plus, like, what dude like i don't i don't do call the cops on me today i'm not doing anything that requires that so a part of me goes let me give you something you know the addict like still crazy yes. person goes well let me give you something to fucking call him about but the more rational since i've got so beside of me that's like hey also don't go to fucking prison and like be a good person and take care of your fucking wife and and soon to be child you know yeah man but you, so uh, you, you should be yeah. able to speak your mind, though. I mean, that's the thing. Like you, you, you should, should be, be able no to. Issues. But you know, here's the thing: in this day and age, is like we said in the beginning, right? Everything's offensive. You, you offended me, so now you owe me something. No, yeah. I offended you, and then you can just move the fuck on. You know, right? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's you know, it's it's funny. I mentioned this before in a previous episode, but I've I've been I've been to jail five times. Uh, when I was younger, I've never been like in prison, but I've been to jail. Longest I spent was like six weeks, um, drug related. You know, when I was younger, I mm-hmm. dealt pots. You know, I fucking got drunk all the time, party all the time, fucking Hell yeah. did, did stupid shit. Um, and I was driving. It's funny because I was actually sober, and I was driving through this intersection, eating a subway sandwich, and I get pulled over <laughs> like two blocks down the road, and the cop walks up, and he's looking at my seats and shit. And I'm like, can I help you, officer? And he goes, uh, yeah, Are you? what are you doing today? And I'm just like, I'm just driving, you know? And and he said, well, I got a report saying somebody was smoking a bong in their car. And I'm like, dude, I was just eating that. That takes sub- commitment. Yeah, I was, like, <laughs> I was like, I was just eating that Subway sandwich. He's like, well, it <laughs> clearly doesn't smell like pot in your car. Right, so right. obviously. I smell like an Italian <laughs> with everything. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> so I was just like, what a weird experience, man. Man, I haven't fucking done something that insane since i was a kid like driving around doing fucking bong hits in cars like you know fuck man you have to be not like screwed in all the way to be doing that kind of shit plus thinking of that water when i first so like i said i was a real strict religious growing up so when i turned 18 and moved out of my mom's house it's like like, all this shit it's like whoa look at all this shit so yeah i got crazy i did a bunch of stupid shit (laughs) 
but uh yeah i mean it's and and i still i mean don't get me wrong i enjoy pot i don't smoke it because of my work and my entrance and my wife and kids are on my entrance so it's not worth it to me right um but you know i'll enjoy a drink every now and then. that's about it yeah, what's well, craziest thing that's I, ever happened i, I am curious because you said you've had some pretty crazy times too um have you had anything driving around getting in trouble uh i mean on what level on drug level crime level like i, I don't know G- give me something good man i, I want to i want to hear some some crazy story that just really like that pops into your head every now and then that you remember from when you were young and dumb <laughs> um I think the thing is this, is that when I was, when I was young from 17, I mean, maybe not even young, but I would say from 16, 17 until fuck well into my late twenties, maybe even early thirties now into my twenties, I would say, uh, up until like after prison mm, a little bit, but for a certain time I lived my life like, uh, I don't even know that I distinguish between right and wrong. I don't think that I gave a fuck. And like, I didn't like in my head, it was never like, Hey, don't hit somebody in the fucking head with a bottle. Cause like they could die. No, right. I, I didn't. You won't, you'll be fine. Yeah. And like, I remember, you know, I was at a kid's party one time and, uh, and there was a, someone from another town there and he walked upstairs and I was smoking weed in the bathroom with my friend. And this kid walked up and I, you know, probably said something like, who the fuck are you? And he was like, you know, said something back. And I was like, okay. And I took a hit of the joint and I gave it to my friend, turned around and just punched this kid as hard as I could in the face. He fell back in the corner. When he got up, I had like a couple other friends in the other rooms that I didn't know about either. And they came out and I mean, this kid got fucked up pretty <laughs> yeah. badly. And, uh, you know, there's only been a few times in my, well, yeah, there's been a few times that I've been in fights where it's like, in the time it was like, Oh, it was so cool. And all of us and fuck. Yeah. We yeah. showed them. But then later on, we go going like, dude, we definitely didn't kill him. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, cause that, that was really never, I don't think the true intention. It was like, you know, let me really fuck you up. But right. you, you never were really, I don't think trying to kill anyone. Another time I bashed a kid over the head with a fucking log. So we were in the woods and this kid told me to go fuck my mother. He was shit faced. Like I was giving him the benefit of the doubt. And I'm like, bro, I need you to stop saying that. I need you to stop saying that. I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. Go fuck your mother. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And I punched him in the face. And this was way back in the day. And I had Timbaland boots on, booted him in the face. He fell Damn. down. Yeah. And I just found like a big log and dropped it on him and walked out of the fucking woods. And like, you know, he lived. And, and that was, you know, what was more terrifying was that I went on vacation. I was a kid. And he called my house like nine times in a row. And on my voice, my dad's thing. You're fucking dead. I'm going to kill you. Your whole family. Like shit. My dad's like, who the fuck is calling my house with all this madness? And I'm like, uh, part of me is like, oh my God, this kid's going to kill me and everything. And I feel like a lot of my life was built around that. Like, hell yeah. And then, oh fuck. Hell yeah. Oh right. fuck. You know? And like that, just mm-hmm. that constant. And it makes sense why down the line, I like to ride motorcycles at a high rate of speed and out of fucking traffic in LA until you know he yeah. crashed four times you know so <laughs> i have rolled the car one time and i just i, I don't that know i've never what, done that was some crazy shit i was driving home from work this is before i actually got into drugs or drinking and i was i, I just the, the doctor said i had mild seizures um basically from too much trauma and and y- your brain kind of does this reset thing where if there's too much stuff that you're thinking that's negative it'll do like a reset Right. And uh, I blacked out. I woke up at, well, as soon as I hit this median. I overcorrected the car spun, hit the median, flipped two times, tossed me into the back seat. The whole roof of the car impaled the driver's seat into the back. And I got tossed into the passenger side rear seat. Right, so and I remember it. getting out of the car upside down because I was in this apartment complex. And I was like, fuck, because I saw one of the tires roll down the street. And I'm like, fuck, so I went to go get the, the tire. And this ambulance comes through. I was like, get the fuck, lay down. What are you doing? Quit, quit moving. What are you doing? I'm all cut up and bloody. And I remember the funniest part of it was I would have died had I had my seatbelt on and I still got a ticket for not having <laughs> my seatbelt on. <laughs> yeah. That's, you know what's crazy is, dude, I shot a lot of heroin and I drove with a lot of people that shot a lot of heroin and never did. I mean, I've hit a lot of shit and crashed into parked cars and, you know, a lot of yeah. fucked up. 
but never have I, uh, and I know people who have hit, you know, fallen asleep at the wheel, hit the middle, flew off into the other side of traffic and died. And yep. yeah, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy how much, um, sometimes some of us will be willing to, you know, gamble with your life and your, and your younger, dumber years, you know? Especially when you live like just such like a, I don't give a fuck. I have nothing to lose. That's, that's what I tell my wife or whatever, you know, there's the most dangerous person is the motherfucker with nothing to lose. That's why I'm not that dangerous anymore. I have a lot to right. lose. Yeah, man. You know, you got a, you got a family. Mm -hmm. and that's important. I mean, that's that's, who, that's who worries me the most in the room. The motherfucker that has nothing to lose. He don't, he don't have to be the toughest or anything. He's got nothing to lose. That means he's yeah. more willing to put a fucking steak knife in me than I am. Well, yeah. I mean, there's probably a lot of those in prison, right? I mean, well, yeah, but I mean, and you know, there's a lot of them walking the street too. You yeah, know? that's that's the thing, and, and you know, I'm this this guy that I'm friends with, who's like a, you know, he does uh, like protection work, and um, uh, he always says, uh, um, fuck, I forget what I was gonna say, uh, um, nothing to lose, uh. I don't know. Fuck it. <laughs> That's yeah. a good story. That's yeah, a really good story, man. <laughs> I get time to tell it again if you want to hear it. So. All right. Yeah, no, of if course. If it comes back to me, I'll tell you. All right. I do want to read one more of these because we. I mean, I'm totally cool with getting on random topics, kind of what happens in every episode. But I do want to read one more of these. Sure. It says, after our baby was born, my husband took pictures of her in the incubator while the nurses did her checkup. Sweet concept, except he took all the pictures facing the delivery bed. So every single one of those precious first pictures of our daughter has me in the background naked and delivering the placenta. <laughs> That's actually kind of fucking epic. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> It'd be even better if he framed one of them and put it up in the house. Yeah, like in the family room or in the mm -hmm. living room where everybody just get comes over. a bunch over. of wedding just... pictures and shit <laughs> in black and white and then just in color in the center is her passing the placenta. <laughs> wait that's how that works they spit the kid out and they got the kid out and they're doing shit and they're still like hey keep pushing bitch you got yep, a whole that's literally yes because there's more shit coming out man afterwards oh, fuck. <laughs> i'd be like fuck you pull it out dude i'm done, I'm done <laughs> put some things in there and pull it the fuck you know, out some people eat the placenta apparently it's really good for you I, i've never yeah, fucking i bet by it all is, means <laughs> i'm all set uh i i what i have heard though is that you take that placenta buzz it or whatever and you put it on ice then that way there if anyone in your family gets hurt or maybe it's just that person later on so like now you know when when he or she or whatever is this age then you can go and grab this shit inject them with that and kind of help them rejuvenate if they were to get you know uh, i've never heard something. that yeah, I, I think I think that's a thing. I could be talking fucking crazy, like I saw something on TikTok and just believed oh, it. So maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> if yeah, I you am, probably I'm saw sure on someone TikTok. in here that's a fucking <laughs> at home nurse will let me know. Oh yeah, my wife would probably correct you on that one. If she, <laughs> she's probably not watching though, she hates talk radio. She'll pop on every now and then. <laughs> so does my wife, but she's that's I gotta say, my wife's my number one supporter. So oh, that's good, man. And and yeah, it's important, you know. Dude, th this is my guy's night out. I really don't go out. So this is, right. that's why I do this. Cause I enjoy doing it. I enjoy talking to people. I'm probably never going to meet, you know, I've had wee man from jackass on a couple of times. He's cool as hell. Yeah. Um, I've had comedians. Uh, I, I do have to say, so I have had some like B and C list actors that come on and, um, I'm all for talking to anybody, but there's a level to where it's almost, there's a tension cause they don't have that comical kind of, sense so when you're just talking random shit uh they don't know how to respond or, or you can just kind of tell that they just don't really know what they're doing so those episodes go really quick <laughs> uh dude there's nothing worse than when you have to keep fucking leading and staring someone mm. back and it's like okay so uh without going um yeah. <laughs> well i just went through everything i wanted to talk about <laughs> in 10 minutes so let's just right, wrap this up <laughs> uh so deviant gentlemen's man i mean what, what was what kind of made that and started that out so when i was uh when i was in la uh at the time i think i had because this was pre-covid so i think i had been sober for uh just about two years or i was just coming up on two years i forget but uh through aa obviously like you know i met a lot of people getting sober i met a lot of famous people i became friends with a lot of people that had connections and, and different opportunities for shit yeah. 
Uh, but I also met just, you know, the average guys or guys that were comedians that, you know, maybe got some stage time over at the comedy store here and there or, you know, whatever. But so I met this kid and, uh, he was a gay Jew from Chicago and, uh, I'm not any of those. And, uh, it was, uh, you know, but we, we met at a meeting and this was one of the kids, like when I was first new, that was always nice to me. And like, I had known he was gay. So in the beginning I was like, this kid's definitely trying to fuck me, get away from me. You know what I mean? But right. then once I got over myself and, and my ego and all that shit early in sobriety and anyway, I started talking to this kid and, uh, he was like, you're really funny. Have you ever thought about doing stand up? And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know. Stand up's not my thing. Like, I don't like doing something scripted. I just like to fucking, you know, improv kind of shit. Yeah. You know, right? Yep. So he was like, have you ever thought about doing a podcast? I'm like, actually, I have. I just don't even know. Uh, I just don't even know where you start. Uh, that's Alexa giving me fucking uh, recommendations. <laughs> right. Babe, want to go ahead and shut that off? Thanks. Uh, uh, what was I saying? Talking about the podcast. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, so he goes to me, have you ever, you know, thought about doing a podcast? I'm like, yeah, I don't know where to go, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I know some guys have a studio, X, Y, and Z. Let's do it. So we did it. And in the beginning, he was like, you know, let's call it, um, I feel like uh, being vulnerable, the honest truth, something. And I was like, dude, that's fucking dorky. I don't want, I don't yeah. want, I don't want it. This is what I didn't want. I didn't want to get stuck to just, you know, the Jay and Bob podcast, because then that's it. I mean, that's, I can't make fucking anything else. That's it. It's just yeah. a podcast. So it's like, I want to make sure it's something that's like a brand, whatever. And so we started firing off things left and right. And when I tell you how hot it was to find common ground with this fucking kid, you know what I mean? And it was like everything he came up with, I was like, dude, no. And then everything <laughs> I came up with, it was just like too much, like, you know, blood and guts and murder and shit. And he's like, dude, yeah. no. So then it was like, all right, let's do it. And I think we, we just went back and forth. And then we finally were like, all right, let's do gentlemen. And let's go from this name to this name and no, this. And and then we just can't. And it was just like, what about deviant gentlemen? And I was like, dude, that's kind of fucking cool. But instantly yeah. I was like, wait, but like a deviant's like someone weird that's like beaten off at a fucking park looking at kids. <laughs> but then when I looked it up and it was like someone who just operates outside the norms of society. And I'm like, well, I can relate to that. And I'm yep. also, you know, now a, a better person. So it made sense. And then from there, it was like, I knew that was a name that if a podcast failed, I could make a fucking shirt line. If a shirt line didn't do so well, I could start a beard butter line. If a beard, whatever, I have endless, I could start a fucking right. matches company if I want. You know? <laughs> so, but so I had originally started with him and we did the podcast and it was comedy. It was a comedy podcast and it was like, we were t polar opposites and it worked great and it was really funny and we had a good time. Um, we were about 20 episodes in. And I mean, the way it worked was like anything we were getting revenue wise went from like this 50, 50 to like a 51, 49 to a 60, 40 to a 70, 30 to an 80, 20 to a dude, I do everything. Something needs to change over and over. I kept telling him that. And we right. just weren't on the same page about what we wanted. And I just felt like he didn't have a fire under his ass like I did. Yep. And then uh, Tommy was my, my, on the 20th episode, Tommy was the, my 20th guest and him and I went out to lunch after and he was like, look, I'm, I, I want to start a podcast. I'd love to do it with you. And, you know, instantly I was like humbled because I'm thinking this kid could ask anybody on the fucking planet. And he's, he asked me, you know, so that must say something about what I, what I'm doing and everything. So I was right. like, you know what? Let me talk to my sponsor. Let me talk to the kid. I, you know, I, of course I want to say yes today, but let me just make sure, you know, and yep. I did. I did all those steps. And finally, I, you know, I eventually reached out to the kid and was like, look, man, this is what I'm trying to do. This is the direction I want to go. And uh, ultimately, that didn't end well for us. And we don't talk anymore, which is a fucking shame. And I've tried yep. reaching back out to him. And it just it is what it is, you know, and I, I yep. had to do what was best for me and what I thought was going to be best moving forward. And I did that. And Tommy and I had a great time doing what we did. And uh, it was a great run and had COVID not happen, you know, I don't know that, you know, things would have gone different, but I had to make a decision like for myself and my family and what was best for me. And, and I did, you know, I mean, you, you could still do it, man. You could still keep it going. So, I mean, well, I could, but here's the thing is like, I'm not, here's the thing. I don't want, cause I've thought about this a few times with DV and gentlemen and it's like, and I know, you know, I talked to Tommy and everything's fine, but um, I don't want to do Deviant Gentleman with someone else again. And then what? Take down all the episodes I did with Tommy. Just keep going from that point. And then it's just kind of like. No, just do what I do. Just have random guests, man. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I thought about that. Or will like I just do it myself and just have guests yeah, on? Because um, he can still be your partner in it, and when he has the time to do it, he can still do it with you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, look, the the reason why I haven't just shut the door on anything is because I, you know, I don't know. I, the The yeah. truth is that I don't know. I don't know what I want to do moving forward with Deviant Gentleman. I tried just doing another podcast with another buddy out here, but again, man, it's just it's yeah. really tough. Unless it it's yours and you're doing it on your own. And then, I mean, look at even with us, right? Like this is yeah. your podcast by yourself. Yep. And because of life, it was, you had something going on. I had something going on. You had something on, you know, and yep. now here we are. But as a podcaster, you had to stay consistent. I think even I was going through my messages and I messaged you and was like, holy fuck, dude, I completely blanked. Like I've left you on red for fucking like two months because when I did it, I was probably doing something. Never went back to it, you know, but if you stay consistent and, yeah. you know, because I think the first time you wanted me to eat some fucking weird hot shit and then the next time there was maybe. Some I did that show too, man. And it was How was not, that brutal? Oh, uh, dude. The Satan's Toe the Sucker. So the chip was, we didn't do the chip. We did ghost pepper noodles because the chip was hard to find. Um, at I, the have, time. I have one here too. So thank you. So the, uh, the hot God. sauce boss, he's got a store called Iburn. They're in Texas actually. And um, he did it with us. The the sit oh, fuck, that toe was nineteen million Scoville, and you have to hold it in your mouth for five minutes. It was brutal. Five I will, minutes. Five minutes, and I will never do it again. It tasted like cinnamon, but like the whole time it's in your mouth, you just got all the saliva building up, and then you're just it's just fire. Like it just hurts. It's not yeah. like a mm, this yeah. is hot, but it, no. it just fucking it hurts. hurts your mouth. <laughs> yes. your head sweats. <laughs> Yeah, dude, it was it was fun though. It was an experience. It was worth the worth the experience. Yeah, I mean, we got those chips. I ordered those yeah. forever ago, and we were supposed <laughs> to do it on TikTok, and never got around to it. And then just fucking. Uh, oh, that's another thing I didn't mention too is that me and my wife, uh, you know, went viral and did the whole you know TikTok famous thing and all yeah. that. We got a we got a pretty substantial following on there. I'm, and I'm trying to do that. I was getting a I was getting a actually sponsored through an app. And then uh, I was making 300 a week. That was a pretty, pretty sweet deal. Yeah. And uh, then that just kind of went south because they tried to redo the contract. I was like, no, fuck you. Um, and uh, <laughs> now I don't make any money. I just kind of do this for the fun, man. Yeah, that's the other thing that's tough, too, is trying to find, you know, people don't understand. And it's like, you know, unless you're doing like a Patreon or something now where it's like, you know, even with Anchor, I mean, I had some people that like yeah. helped out with it and I've, I've generated some cash for that, but nothing that where it's like, oh, let me just sit back and do nothing forever now. Right. But, um, uh, I was, I'm trying to get there on TikTok. I, I finally broke a thousand. Uh, so, oh, that's what I was going to say. So with, with TikTok, uh, a podcast is the toughest thing to put. Well, it was when tick. So when TikTok first came around and I was going to the studio and I had the, the kid that worked at the studio and was like, are you on TikTok? And I'm like, what the fuck is TikTok? You know? Right. And that was like the beginning of the pandemic and her and I started fucking around with all the shit. And mm. you know, I started putting the podcast reels up there and everything. And uh, it does, you know, considering I have like, I don't do shit with my TikTok. Everything's on, on, I uh, went to the Boston, the Brit, yeah. but the deviant John one even has like, I don't, I pay zero fucking attention to that. And it still has like 8,000 followers on it, you know, but That's now nice. what's gotten bigger since TikTok started is like, especially with the game is fucking Twitch, TikTok, fucking stream. Yeah. I mean, they got seven All different gamer, platforms man. open at once and they're, you know, if you want to just stay on TikTok, you can, but the whole time they're going, you know, fuck TikTok, come over to my Twitch and all the people they get to do that. Now that's dough, you know, and yep. then if their live stays long enough with enough people, TikTok's also giving them dough too. And um, now it's a different, if it's a different ball game now, as opposed to, you know, all the things, I mean, even Instagram, everything with right. how much longer of store uh, reels and all that shit you can put up. So mm -hmm. It is, what, um, it is what it is, man. The clips that I post are, are actually what get more attention than my show itself, which is fine. I mean, yeah. my YouTube, I get about a thousand views a month. That's all right. I get about 1200 on Spotify a month. Not bad. It's not great, but it's not terrible. And I just, I just roll with it, man. Eventually I'll either get bigger or I'll just, I can just keep doing it as a hobby. Uh, here's the thing too, is like, I remember when I first started the podcast and like, uh, 
I, I couldn't believe five people fucking watched that first episode. You know what I mean? Like uh, right. it blew my mind. And I remember being like, holy shit. And then, you know, once I brought Tommy into the mix or some of the people like our most viewed episode, I mean, I'll give mm. you a guess which one it is, but it's the one with Kamar RX, you know? And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I still go to Anchor and I look at like, you know, the Apple Play and all this shit. And I mean, you know, it's got 2000 listens at, at the minimum on everything. And I'm thinking yeah. like, that's so wild to me because I never thought something like that was going to happen. Like, who the fuck cares? Who the fuck yeah. wants to listen to what I have to say? Or how many people want to tell me that I think I'm fucking Joe Rogan or something? You know what I mean? Right, like, no. Get a yeah. grip, dude. My, uh, my biggest viewed episode was with uh, David Weiss. He's a flat earther. All about the flat earth theory. And uh, he had a huge following. And, I mean, it was me and a couple other podcasters just kind of drilling him about some of his shit. And, uh, I mean, they I, we got a lot of backlash and like comments are crazy and shit, but it's it's fun, man. I don't give a fuck. It's you know, <laughs> I told him ahead yeah. of time I was like, we're gonna give you a hard time and we're gonna enjoy you. And he said, bring it. And then afterwards, I was like, hey man, you should come back on and we can get more in depth about it. He's like, no, you guys need to do your research. So I think I pissed him off a little bit. I don't really give a shit though. <laughs> yeah, you need to do your research. Go and read about something that might not be real. <laughs> you know? Right. I don't know. I do. Here's the thing is like, I see all these things and all these people that like will convince me on social media. Like, Hey, this is the, why the flat fucking world's flat. Have you ever taken yeah. soda? Take a soda, flip it upside down, throw it against the fucking wall. And in seven <laughs> seconds and I'm like, how the fuck? Okay. That makes the, I guess the fucking sure, earth's flat. Sure, why not? And the next guy's <laughs> like, well, it's a sphere because if you fucking throw a penny in the air and I'm like, well, I guess, you know, you both fucking are convincing. So do I have to put a gun <laughs> to your head to find out who the fuck is lying? You know? Yeah. Well, and he never had a like definitive answer. All he had was an argument to a question. You know, there was never really an answer to any of the questions. Yeah. It was more of an Sounds argument. Like a Democrat. Yeah. <laughs> um. Hey, well, you know, man, we we hit the hour mark, so this is about the time that Wait. I kind of ra wrap it up. So, man, uh, I I do want to say thank you for coming on finally. And honestly, dude, if you like to just shoot the shit, you're more than welcome to come on more often. Yeah, um, love start it. the whole the idea of stardom when I first started it was uh, the shit that goes viral these days is just stupid random shit that people do. And as I've grown, it's became more of just the random conversations that I have with people. The topic is just to keep it random. So like, yeah, you know, this fucking well, shit dude, we you know, reading. like when I so when I got sober, it was like, you know, I I was very one track minded for a long way of who I talk to, who I, you know, how I judge you everything. And I think about just how much missed opportunity and, you know, relationships and connections, just all these things in life that I missed out on. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, that's the cool thing about podcasts and stuff is like, you know, when you can have conversations with people or talk about shit that you disagree with and like, that's it. You know what I mean? Like now yeah. is the day and age of like, this is how it is. If you don't agree with me, I'm unfollowing you. I don't, I mean, how many people fell out family wise because of COVID and the presidency and all this shit. And it's, yep. it's wild, man. It's fucking wild. It is. It is. But uh, yeah, man, I, I do. I appreciate you coming on. Um, I appreciate again, you. Congrats for, for having a kid coming, man. That's, that's Thanks, a good man. feeling. So, and I actually, uh, I do know the sex and I don't, I hope I didn't slip up in this at all. If I did, my wife will definitely let me know. But uh, uh, you haven't told me anything yet. So, <laughs> yeah, we uh, we're very excited. So good. Um, that's awesome, man. That's yeah, awesome. Stay tuned. So. That's coming soon. We'll reveal that soon. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm fucking. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Right, hey, after after you have the kid and you know you get some sleep, you know, a month or two down the road, I'll have you back on and we'll talk. Yeah, about fucking it. hey, dude. I love it. Hopefully, I'll have everything set up and we can, you know. I look yeah. a little more professional and not like just a fucking <laughs> jerk off on my phone. Like, oh, hey. <laughs> no, you're good. Hey, and th like I said, that's the first time I, I ever had that. I swear to God, I was ready. Look. I, I, dude, I know. I see. I, I saw you like fucking with your stuff. <laughs> uh, nightmare. <laughs> Anyways, but I appreciate you. And, you know, yeah. like I said, thank you for being understanding and, you know, and working back and forth. And, you know, we finally made yeah. it work. So yeah, always I mean, grateful, I dude. Love this shit. Thank you, and uh, we will be in touch. I will put everything in. The, is there anything in the description you want me to put besides your like social medias? Um, no. All right, yeah. man. Social media. I mean, if you want, you, feel free to throw Boston and the Brit on there too. Boston I will and the do Brit that. Tea Company, Boston you, and the Brit TikTok, all that shit. Boston and the Brit DV and Gentlemen, Shane Vitko, or Shane. Yeah. So yeah. All right, man. All right, bud. You guys have a good one. You too. Later. Bye.